Hey there, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to show you how to paint these rainy days inspired watercolor paintings step by step. I will also share some additional painting tips and tricks that will hopefully help you on your watercolor journey. For these paintings, I'm going to use two reference images, a thunderstorm sky and a window covered in droplets. I link these images for you in the description box down below. One tip if you're someone who rather prefers having some sort of an outline to work with but you don't want to draw it yourself, you can actually print out your reference image and transfer a few guidelines onto your watercolor paper. So here I already printed out the reference images and the size of the painting I wanted to create. But of course you can choose any size you want. And then turn around the paper so you see the back side. Next, take a soft pencil, for example 4 or 6B, and start drawing all over the paper. This way you create a layer of pencil lead that will serve as a transfer foil without actually buying it. Since for the thunder we only need the general layout, I just held the paper slightly against the light to see where the lines are and then just drew over those areas. So you don't have to cover everything in pencil lead. You only need them where the areas are that you want to transfer later. And this is how the back side of the paper looks now. Now we can go ahead and transfer the outlines onto our watercolor paper. So here I already added my washi tape to the edges and to the middle section so I have a nice white frame around the paintings later. Then place down your images onto your watercolor paper and use an H or HB pencil to transfer the guidelines. So here I lightly press down the pencil as I traced all the lines for the thunder. Don't press too hard, you don't want to carve in those lines. Now again, you don't have to transfer everything, you can just focus on the main lines that are thicker and add the thinner lines using a gel or ink pen later once you're done painting. I also outlined the city below the sky just so I don't forget to paint it later. And then I did the same with the droplets. Here you also don't need to outline every single droplet. Focus on the bigger shapes and then you can add any small details later. Tracing certain elements of your painting is a great way to study your reference. Here for example, you can get the feel for how different droplets are shaped so you can confidently draw them later on your own. Or if you have a sketch or a different reference where you want to make sure that the proportions and the design you thought out are the same, you can use this technique to make your life easier. This is basically like using a light box to trace your messy sketches onto a new clean sheet of paper, but backwards. This is how my watercolor paper looked once I've transferred the main elements of the reference images. Now to create the thunder and the droplets, I'm going to use masking fluid and a thin synthetic brush. Let's start with thunder first. Now because it can be a little challenging to create super thin lines with masking fluid when the liquid is slightly thicker and you're using a brush, the different lines will be slightly wider but that's okay. I decided I will create the main lines of the thunder wider and then just add the thinner branches later on with an ink pen. But if you have a masking fluid pen, for example, you can use it for that as well. I also added some masking fluid to the city skyline on the bottom, but this is optional. If you don't have masking fluid at all, you can also use a white wax candle or a crayon or just paint the lines later on top of the finished artwork using any white pen or opaque paint you have. And this is how it looks for now. While the masking fluid is drying, you can move on to the droplets. Now here you want to continue applying masking fluid by covering all these different outlines you just created for the droplets. As you can see, I mostly focused on the big shapes when I trace them so now I can just go ahead and apply the masking fluid to those areas and add a few smaller dots here and there if I feel like it. With masking fluid, it's also super important that you test your paper and masking fluid first. Sometimes they don't want to collaborate. Here I'm using 100% cotton cold pressed watercolor paper by Kansen and masking fluid by Schminke and they work really well together. Also if you want to avoid any paper damage, make sure to let the masking fluid dry naturally. You don't want to use any hair dryer to speed up the drying process or otherwise it will be difficult to remove the masking fluid later. 
Now, once I applied masking fluid to all the big outlines, I then went ahead and just added a few small droplets here and there by pressing down the brush to a few areas. If you look closely at the reference image, you can also see that the droplets are following a certain curved line. So that's why when I added those dots, I didn't just randomly edit them. I tried to follow an imaginary curve as I pressed down my brush. And this is how it looks once I covered all the needed areas in masking fluid. Now because the masking fluid on the thunder has fully dried as I was working on the droplets, we can now move on to painting the first painting. Now for the sky around the thunder, I'll be using indigo, ivory black and some blue violet in tubes because I wanted to have as much pigment at once as possible. But you can use any similar colors, they don't have to be exactly the same. Before applying the paint, let's prepare the paper. Load up a big round or flat brush with clean water and distribute it all over the paper. This way we'll have more time to work on the painting and we can use the wet into wet technique with ease. Remove any excess water if you see any pools gathering around the edges. Alright, now let's start putting some paint onto the paper. For this step I used my Da Vinci Casaneo mop brush and a mix of indigo and ivory black because I wanted to have a rather bluish black. But I also used paint gray and a little bit of blue, I just ran out of mine. Use a very concentrated mix of paint and then start applying it right where the darkest areas are. So here I started applying the paint around the edges and followed the outline of my reference images as I continued distributing the paint. So I added the paint to the right corner, center and bottom area of the painting. Next rinse your brush and load it up with the second color. In this case, I used blue violet, but then I mixed in a little bit of a red violet to the mix because it looked just too bluish to me after all. From there, I went ahead and started distributing a concentrated mix of paint to the leftover areas on the paper. Make sure to keep the lower half slightly lighter as this is the brightest area of our thunderstorm sky. Now we want to work on blending the colors together and adding more texture to the clouds. So here I just added my dark colors to the violet areas on top and on the lower half and lightly blended these areas together. Because on the reference image there was this contrast between the dark cloud and the light area in the sky, I tried to keep it as well by not blending out this part at all. You can also mimic a little bit of rain as well by moving your brush diagonally over the paper. Next, let's remove some paint around the lower part of the thunder using the lifting technique. So here I used a clean damp brush and lightly lifted off some of the paint around the thunder. This way we make it glow slightly more. I also did the same in the upper half where I saw lighter areas in the reference image. But what you can also do is you can use a tissue paper like a stamp. Here for example, I crumbled up my tissue paper and lightly pressed down the paper onto the paper to create these loose cloud textures. But make sure you don't press too hard. We only want a little bit of this texture to be visible without removing too much paint. Now you can keep adjusting the paint if needed, but make sure that you only use a damp brush or otherwise you'll get blotchy results later if you start adding additional water on top of the already drying paint. And this is how it looks now. While the first painting is drying, we can start working on our droplet painting. For the droplet painting, we're also going to use the wet on wet technique, so begin by applying clean water all over the paper. By the way, make sure the masking fluid is completely dry before you do it. While the paper starts soaking up some of the water, let's prepare some paint. In the reference image, I can see a blue sky with white clouds, so here I'm going to use some ultramarine, but you can also use cobalt blue or any other blue color you have. Then again, 
Load up your brush with a concentrated mix of blue colored paint and start distributing it starting at the top. You basically want to create a loose transition from dark blue on top to light blue around the center, similar to the reference image. Don't worry about a super even transition, it's only okay to have it very loose and uneven. Next, load up your brush with the same bluish black color we used for the thunderstorm painting and begin applying it starting at the bottom. While the paper is still damp, you also want to outline the silhouette you can see in the reference image. And because we paint wet on wet, everything that we currently paint will look blurry. And this is exactly what we're going for because we want the background to be blurry and out of focus because the droplets are the ones that are really in focus here. And this is how the painting looks for now. Now let everything completely dry and you can go back to finishing our thunderstorm painting. Once everything is completely dry, you can go ahead and remove the masking fluid. Now because my masking fluid is not really a peel away type of fluid, I actually need to rub it off. So for this step, I wrap the tissue around my finger to remove the masking fluid. But you can also use any other foil or something like this so you don't touch the paper with your fingers too much and it's less painful. Alright, as I said earlier, it can be challenging to be very detailed with masking fluid if you don't have super precise tools. That's why I use my white ink pen to add some fine lines to paint all of those different branches of the thunder. This way we get this contrast between thick and thin lines. I also use some of my Posca pens to add the different lights across the city skyline. I added some white, orange and red dots and lines just to make this area look more realistic and more like a city during the night. Alright, now it's time to remove the masking fluid on the second painting. Here again I use tissue paper to rub it off. Now these droplets look more like snow, but we will turn them into water droplets in a moment. For this step, I'm using a smaller brush and the same blue color I used for the sky. Now we basically want to create a mirrored copy of the blue sky, the white clouds and the dark blue silhouette. Let's start with mirroring the sky first. So you want to add the blue colored paint that you used for the sky to the bottom part of the droplet and then blend it out upwards while leaving out a little bit of the white. The white space is basically the mirrored sky that you can see in the center of the image. Later we'll also add the darker areas. Pay close attention to your reference picture to know where exactly to place the blue color and how to shade the droplet. You also want to do the same in the lower half of the painting. Here you don't have to be super precise. I, for example, simply brushed over the same blue paint over each white area while focusing on the bottom side of each droplet again. Now, once you've added the blue paint to the lower half of the droplets, it's time to add some darker paint to mirror the dark silhouette on the lower half of the painting. Here you want to use the same dark blue color that you used earlier and start outlining your droplets following the shape on top while leaving out the white area that you didn't cover in paint earlier. Remember, this is the horizon mirrored in the droplets. Again, pay close attention to your reference to keep the thickness of the lines similar to the reference. And you can also see exactly where to place those darker lines because sometimes they're on the top, sometimes a little bit on the side as well. So it's good to really pay attention to the reference and study exactly where everything is. And as you start outlining your droplets, you might think that it looks strange. And sometimes art can look strange when you look at it up close and you might start questioning yourself if this even looks good. But the important part here is to remember, sometimes you need to take a step back to see the whole picture. Now 
Now because from the very beginning we were focusing on the big droplets, we can now add some smaller ones as well. So here for example I keep outlining all the bigger droplets but then I went ahead and just lightly added super small C-shaped curves here and there to create the illusion of smaller droplets. I used the same dark blue color for the top and the sky blue color for the lower half. If you want to make the painting look super realistic, you can spend as much time on every single droplet as you want and add as many as you want, it's totally up to you. So continue painting the droplets and add as much detail as you want and then you can let everything completely dry. Now you just need to remove the tape and you're done. And if you're interested in learning where and how to start with watercolor painting and you need some additional painting ideas, my very first watercolor book is officially available for pre-order. All you have to do is check out the link in the description box down below to find out where you can pre-order. All pre-orders come with special bonuses so I can't wait for you to get it. I really hope you liked this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!